When Four Corners exposed an apparent cover-up in the Catholic Church over a self-confessed pedophile known as Father F, the church said it couldn't act because it didn't know the identity of any of his victims. There's never been a successful prosecution of the priest, mainly because victims haven't been willing to go to the police. Today, that has changed. 7.30 can reveal somebody has gone to the authorities. For 30 years, Mark Borton has struggled with the memories of what Father F did to him as an 11-year-old altar boy. He's been deeply affected by the suicide of other victims, including his former friend and neighbour, Damien Jurd. Adam Harvey has his story. It's been a tough few years for Mark Borton. He's had to abandon his hobby after he was knocked off his dirt bike three years ago. Yeah, you go over jumps and yeah, airborne and think, wow, freedom. But yeah, since the accident, can't do much. So it's more, more time to think and reflect. And yeah, I don't think that's a good thing. The crushed discs in his back are so painful he can't work. He sold his business. And it means he's often not much fun to live with. He has his good and bad days. Um, some days he is like a bear with a, a sore paw. But Mark Borton's partner, Belinda Hall, knew it wasn't just back pain that was tormenting him. I always felt that Mark couldn't give himself completely um, emotionally. I felt that there was something wasn't right, something was missing. One of Mark's sisters actually thought something may have happened to him and she sat down and spoke to me about it. And that's when I decided to confront Mark and ask him. I don't know, yeah, it's, it's a strange feeling. I mean, you can't explain it, but it's, it's like something eating you. And so last year, for the first time, Mark Borton told someone about what happened to him in the New South Wales town of Moree 30 years ago, when he was in fifth and sixth class at the local Catholic primary school. We helped um, set up the altar and light candles and help out the priests in, in um, yeah, trying to get the word across. One of those priests was the man that we must call Father F. Yeah, I thought he was trying to do the right thing and um, draw the community closer to everyone. And he used to meet people out the front and, you know, very friendly. The Bortons were a religious family. They welcomed Father F into their home. After dinner, he'd say, oh, well, would you like to um, go and stay at the presbytery? One night in the presbytery, Mark Borton awoke to find Father F in bed with him. Um, I knew he, I could feel he was naked. He made me lay there and he actually um, put his pants between my legs and um, had to put his leg over my leg so I couldn't move. and. And the abuse went on and on. I even went, aw went away on a trip to an a altar boys camp and, um, and I know he made me perform oral, oral sex on him. Um, yeah, um, I don't know why I thought it would stop, but it just, it didn't. Um. I just feel heartbroken for him. I, I feel so sorry for him. What, what's happened to him is very wrong and nobody should ever be taken advantage of like that. Mark Borton wasn't Father F's only victim. At least three other Moree altar boys or their families have detailed abuse by the priest. Father F was finally expelled from the church in 2005. He lives today in Armidale, near some of his victims and their families. He's never faced trial, despite admitting to senior priests that he molested at least five boys.
One of them was Mark's friend, Damien Jurd. In the mid-1980s, Damien's father came and asked Mark Borden if he too had been abused. And asked me, did I, um, did he do, do anything to me? And, um, worse luck, I, I said no, because I, I felt ashamed and guilty and didn't want anyone to know. And, but knowing what I know now, I, I wish I had of it. It could have, might have, might have been different. I don't, I just don't know. Damien Jurd killed himself in 2001, and it's for Damien, rather than himself, that Mark Borden has finally gone to police. Yeah, yeah. And guilt of a friend that committed suicide over it. However, it's not your fault. No, no. You're an innocent victim. I know, I'm coming to realise that, but it just takes time to get over. Or it will take time. Yeah. Hopefully one day I can move on and have, a, have justice done for the people who can't have justice. It's taken three decades, but today Mark Borton drove to his local police station to report what happened to him all those years ago. I suppose this is a case of yeah, releasing, letting go, and I think it'll leave a lot of, hopefully it'll leave a lot of people that have lost ones feeling better and something will be done, and it hopefully won't happen ever again. If it never happens again, it'll be a great thing. I've now I've, I've done the right thing. Adam Harvey reporting.